Wizard. Barbarian. Translate this orcish for me. We need to know what creature we will be facing. Half orc barbarian. Uh huh. The journal says that the monster that sleeps in this mine is the Tierask? <laughs> Wizard. <laughs> the the what? Hey, what's up everybody? The Indie Memes video here. Welcome to another scatter ray. Uh, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Welcome. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Before jumping into the video, I just wanna ask you if you wanna smash the like button, I would really appreciate it and it helps out. If you want, you can also smash the dislike, so I've heard it doesn't matter as long as you engage. So yeah, thank you for doing that and I hope you enjoyed the video. Wholesome. My husband is playing D&D with some friends and told me to come look at the cat, who is sitting in a chair like a person. My husband handed him a d20 and said, Sir, you have to roll a stealth check to convince the other party members you are a human. And the cat immediately batted the d20 and rolled a 14. The party cheered for him. The final human player joined the table and they brought out a whole extra chair so the cat could remain at the table. He's now the party's official druid and canonically in wild shape all the time and therefore unable to speak common. <laughs> Brutal DMing. A fellow DM told me about a cursed amulet one of his players had. They never checked to see if it was cursed. They just put it on. It absorbs and negates all offensive magic spells against the wearer, direct or splash damage. What the player didn't know was that every time this happened, the DM kept a list of each spell and the amount of damage it would have done. Well, about three fourths through the campaign, one of the party members asks the wearer if they can borrow the amulet. They were in a city restocking before their next quest. As soon as the player with the amulet took it off, boom, four of our six players dead. The last two weren't on that side of the city, as the entire city district was leveled. Casualties numbered in the thousands. I'm a bit bothered by the fact that there's an unclosed parenthesis, but I'm gonna let it slide because this is really good. <laughs> So, equipping some mad mage's minion with a bunch of this would be fantastic. Make a bunch of kobolds immune to magic for a fight. Then, when they go to loot the bodies, boom. <laughs> oh god, this is even worse. Yeah, these are some brutal DMing ideas that you're hopefully not gonna use against your players if you're a DM. <laughs> I think the right choice was made. Bard holds up a ring. Will you marry me? Oh my god, yes. Slips ring on the finger. She gains plus 2 intelligence and changes her mind. <laughs> That's sad for the bard, shouldn't have chosen a plus 2 intelligence one. It is thematically cool though. White dragons should breathe fire. What? Think about it. White dragons live in frozen environments and their prey is adapted to the cold. Everything they hunt is resistant to cold damage. There's no benefit to having a frost breath. They should breathe fire to bypass resistances. Red dragons should have ice breath instead. Their prey is more often fire resistant. Jesse, what the f are you talking about? Okay, why does Jesse make so many good points? <laughs> this one also makes sense. I mean, it, if you think about it, it, it's, it makes more sense this way, right? Oh, hey, the next one is also with this template. If you do this, do it with love, not as punishment. Same should be applied to the amulet from earlier if possible. <laughs> Players who don't take notes make the perfect victims for a big bad evil guy that manipulates their memories. What? Think about it. You can add little details during recaps and fudge others. If anyone calls you out on something, just say it in your notes and keep gaslighting them on bigger and bigger things. Jesse, what the f*** actually happened to our favorite NPC? <laughs> Lambasted in 25 words or less. Guaranteed. When your bard's nightly ritual is to use up their remaining spell slots to cast sending and talk smack to the big bad evil guy. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me or this feels like a boomer meme, but it's also funny so. <laughs> I'm going to get proficiency in chair so I can kill ghosts and short rest like a champion. Per raw, all of this deal the same base damage of 1d4. Does it make sense? I'll let you decide. <laughs> Um, I mean, depending on how you use them, you could argue for it, I guess. I don't know, I feel like even the chair could do a lot of damage if used properly. It's all about perspective. Warlock. We are the same, you and I. Cleric. No, I serve my god. My power comes from faith. How do you know what your god expects of you? It's all right here in this book. Would you say you agreed to follow these rules in exchange for your god's favor, which is their power? Yeah, n no, no, not like that. You're saying it wrong. Your patron just has a better PR department, honey. <laughs> Th that is an interesting perspective indeed. <laughs> you thought I was a frail old mage? 
Fighter, Wizard and Barbarian. PC, choose who you'll fight. I choose you. <laughs> Wrong choice, says the Bladesinger Wizard. <laughs> My new dungeon will leave players at a loss for words. Yeah, if you don't get this joke, it's better that way and I'm honestly happy for you. <laughs> ah, Jesus, man. I decided I don't want to be a slaver and somehow this makes me evil. Oathbreakers are all evil. I broke the Oath of Conquest. That's a good oath to break, I guess. I mean, you know, if, you, if you're gonna break an oath anyways, might as well be the one of conquest. Getting to play too much is the real fantasy. 80s. This kids played D&D 16 hours a day. Today. So guys, Dan can play every third Wednesday for one and a half hours, but Riley can only play for 15 minutes at a time every other Saturday. But not during any month with a commercialized holiday. <laughs> Does that leave any available? <laughs> that doesn't leave very many options, does it? I have to roll a lot more dice though. Playing D&D by yourself is just writing a book. That means if my campaign is good enough, I can sell it for profit. Tough choice. Watching the Critical Role Campaign Free Episode 1 stream live. Not getting fired from work for watching D&D in the middle of the day. <laughs> my Australian... <laughs> Okay, so interestingly, campaign 2 was only 8 episodes long, which, I don't know, that's really short, right? I, I thought it would go on for longer. I, I started watching it, I've seen the first 2 or 3 episodes. Um, I had no idea it was over and the new one started. Uh oh, wizard. Barbarian, translate this orcish for me. We need to know what creature we will be facing. Half orc barbarian. Uh, huh. The journal says that the monster that sleeps in this mine is the Tierask <laughs> wizard. <laughs> the the what? Maybe the Tierask is just a smaller, kinder, not as dangerous relative of the Tierask. <laughs> One can only hope so. With the right accommodations and the right group, D&D can be amazing for everyone. I don't think I could play D&D with my ADHD. It wouldn't let me focus for that long. As a DM with ADHD, do you want me to show you some safety tools that I use? That, that was nice, that was wholesome. This <gasps> tastes like chocolate. Wait a minute, prestidigitation is the perfect weight loss tool. What? Yeah, you can chill, warm or flavor up to one cubic foot, cu cu what? Cubic foot of non-living material for one hour. It would make lettuce taste like bacon. You could even help people survive a famine by flavoring dirt to taste like chocolate or meat. Jesse, are you eating dirt right now? Um, yeah, I mean it doesn't actually work like that, because if you eat dirt that's whatever meat flavored, it's still dirt, it's, it's not meat, it doesn't have calories or stuff that you need from food. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Warforged have feelings too. Warforged aren't people, they're just machines. Just a machine? That's like saying that you're just an ape. Bang. Just a violent ape. Easy choice to be honest, click clack. You can only pick one, choose wisely. A vampire girlfriend, she loves you. A party of 5 players that always shows up on time for your sessions. <laughs> I mean, you, you gotta pick the second one, right? That, that one is way harder to find. Like, even if you know that vampires don't exist, the, the first one is still, you have better chances of finding that. <laughs> invalid, I say. A warforged made of mimics. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> the argument is not the only thing that's gonna be invalid, um, if you're still alive. <laughs> we are not the same. You take median health at level ups, I roll my health. We are not the same. This is how you get Time Lords. Nobody. The wizard who picked haste and slow for his third level spells. The laws of time are mine. D&D improved my game. It's a bit unorthodox, but it's the only 100% certain method to keep your children from teenage pregnancy. Oh god. Hey son, I uh... I have something for you. Dungeons and Dragons, Player's Handbook. <laughs> 
trying to explain D&D to my coworkers without sounding weird, part 2. How's that Dungeons and Dragons thing going? Well, last night, one of my players laced the town's bread and water supply with silver to suss out a werewolf. What they didn't expect was that half the town were werewolves the whole time. They know this now after a couple dozen of the creatures in human form vomited blood out of every orifice in front of their families and neighbors. Now the town is turning into John Carpenter's The Thing. Everyone is really loving the suspense and I'm excited for the next week. You should play sometime. <laughs> So you guys pass through a forest with a couple of trees, there's a rock or two and maybe a bird. How I wrote it versus how I ran it. <laughs> Today's session was interesting. The players enter a suicidal encounter with a creature way above their CR, jokingly offer them a free level up if they beat it without anybody dying, including their 5 health points pet. They actually did it. They actually did it. <laughs> nice. To my wife, who wishes for the death of the fantastic meme that she made. May Reddit make it immortal. Happy 6 year anniversary. <laughs> nice. Wholesome. I keep multiple holy symbols on me and invoke whatever deity might come in useful at any given moment. <laughs> I reroll the ones too. You point by, I roll 4d6, drop the lowest. We are not the same. You traitor. Yes, I've heard it before. Now live or die. Your choice. The party finally defeats the Atropol and Acer Rack and gets ready to destroy the Soulmonger, Warlock. Hold on, let me get my husband. A gate opens as a pit fiend steps out and looks at the exhausted party, Warlock. Thank you for your assistance, but we'll be taking the Soulmonger now. Well, good luck then, to the rest of the party, I mean. Respect and one love. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The one reading this. I just hummed a song for you. You've got bardic inspiration. You can use that extra d10 for anything you need to conquer today. Do the thing. Oh, okay then. Th that was really wholesome. That was really nice. <laughs> 247365. I'm a straight white man every day of my life. But on Wednesday nights, I just want to be a lesbian. My friend on his druid character who is searching for her wife. Funny story about that actually. She's figured out that she is a lesbian 7 days a week. <laughs> We got another one, girls. Is it me or have a lot of these memes been wholesome and nice? People joke about how silly the idea of being an atheist in a Dungeons and Dragons style fantasy setting is, but if you think about it, empirical proof of a supernatural being's existence doesn't tell you anything in particular in a setting like that, does it? There are lots of creatures in a D&D style fantasy setting that could credibly pull off impersonating a god in a way that your average human would have no reasonable way of fact checking. And I'm not just talking about supernatural con artists, though there is that as well. D&D proposes a milia in which there's a whole ecosystem of things that magically pretend to be other things. Imagine being a D&D cleric and discovering one day that the thing you've been worshipping and that grants you your magical powers is actually just a really big mimic, is what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah, okay, it all goes back to mimics, doesn't it? Alright, on that note, we're gonna end the video here, so thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon, I really appreciate it, so thank you so much for the support given there. Um, thanks for watching, if you want check that out, as well as links to any social media, the Discord server, the subreddit. And yeah, that's it, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye!